On this channel, I share what I learned with you, and I feel like it would be wildly irresponsible to not share this GitHub repository with you. I learned so much from it regarding file structure, regarding best practices. It contains a full payment integration with Stripe, an authentication system with GitHub and email, a completely statically generated markdown blog, and so much more that I'm going to show you in this video. At the end, I'll also show you how you can run it locally to really experiment with it. You know, just play around with the files and see how it works in detail. This is the repository. Let's go over what it does for us, what's in there. And then at the end, I'm also going to show you how you can copy this to your local machine and actually learn from it, run it locally and all that good stuff. First off, I mean, this is just the repository. It doesn't look super impressive, but there's a link right here that we can visit. And if I go out of full screen, that, links, that link points to tx.shadcn.com. And then here we can see a live version of what this repository looks like if you run it on your machine. And there's so much in here. I think it even lists the features in the readme file. There's there's honestly so much in here you can learn from. Um, and all done in Next.js 13. Super cool validations with Zod written in TypeScript with a database and so on. There's a full payment system in here. There's documentation, there's a text editor. It's super cool. And we're going to get started from the very start. So this is the homepage you land on. And uh, you can see the some of the features down here. Authentication and Okay, some other stuff we don't care about. First, let's log in. I'm going to use GitHub. We could also just use an email that works, by the way. This is super cool. I'm going to sign into my GitHub account right here. That's going to redirect us. So the, the authentication is fully working. It's uh, super cool. Also with email, a lot of people asked about that. Um, the reason I don't do that in my normal open source projects is because it adds a lot of overhead because email is not as simple as the regular auth providers. And then here, this is the dashboard you land in once you log in. We can create a new post like that, visit the new post. And by the way, this all looks beautiful, right? This is not only clean code in this repository, it's also beautifully done and styled. So we can create posts. This is what this uh, is all about, right? It's kind of a paid system where you can have three free posts. And then beyond that, um, we can see a toast notification, your post has been saved. And then beyond that, we need to pay to create more posts. Obviously, um, this is just a test, but we can create posts. We can go back and then see our posts in here. They are being maintained in a planet scale database. And then if we wanted to create more posts, we can manage our subscription. This is done using Stripe. There's a full Stripe integration in this. For now, I'm going to cancel my plan because I already tried this out. Let's cancel the plan and then go back and actually resubscribe. Really quick, the payment system thought that I already paid for one month. Therefore, I couldn't do it with the same account. So here's me logging in with another account. And the cool thing is, depending on whether we have already created an account for this or not, it's going to send us a different email. So first off, it's going to send us a register email. And then if we already have an account, a sign in email, which is very well done. And it uses something called postmark for that under the hood. Then we land in the dashboard as a logged in user that currently is on the free plan. So now let's try out the whole Stripe integration. We can click upgrade to pro. That's going to forward us to the Stripe homepage or the, the Stripe checkout page rather with a $19 per month subscription. And what we can do is use a test Stripe card to simulate the payments. So we can say Stripe test cards. And I think the test card is 42, 42 and a bunch of 42s we can use to simulate a successful payment. We can put any date in the future and any CVC, any name does not matter. Hit subscribe and that is going to successfully subscribe us to this um, pro plan of the application. And now you can see we are on the pro plan. So if you want to learn how to properly do a Stripe integration into your app in Next.js, I think this is one of the coolest ways to explore that for yourself. I looked at the whole code. I did the Stripe integration from this repository myself in another app. It worked super well. Honestly, it's very, very cool to learn from that. We have user settings and these don't seem to work right now. Interesting. They worked before, but apparently they don't right now. Probably because I logged in by email and not by Google account. So we can't really change the display name. That might be it. Uh, but now we can create more posts because we are on the pro plan. 
That's one of the features in this repository. Also, we have a blog and you write blog articles using Markdown. There's a whole integration for content layer and Markdown where you can just write Markdown and everything in here is included, right? You have these um, code blocks that are beautifully displayed, the headings and so on. And this, this whole um, blog article is written in Markdown with a table with highlighted words. I can zoom in so you can see this a bit easier. Very, very cool stuff. And then we can go back to see all posts down here. And that's not all. What you can also do is go into the documentation. And this is, I mean, this is kind of a inception of documentations because you, this documentation is open source as well, right? You can learn how this is done exactly. And the cool thing is it generates a table of content right here that you can click on and it takes you to where that is. Well, it should actually, it doesn't do that apparently. And you can search the documentation and you can go into the introduction and actually learn how this is built and go into the code and literally learn how this is built. Like, that's what I mean, kind of the inception of how is this built. It's super cool. You can see there are built-in components. There's code blocks you can use in your markdown to edit these blog articles where you can easily highlight lines. You can highlight words if you wanted to. You can show these line numbers as easily as adding this little bit of code right here. So for example, you can add the title of the code. You can highlight a line by just listing the line in these curly braces right here and also pass a you know, three to six, for example. So it's gonna highlight multiple lines. You can highlight certain words in your code, which I think is super neat. And you can add line numbers as easy as just saying, show line numbers right here. And that's leaving you with a code block that looks like this. How cool is that? It's syntax highlighted at build time, by the way. There's no JavaScript shipped to the browser to highlight this at runtime, but rather whenever you build or deploy the application, it's gonna generate all the static files for you. So way less JavaScript is shipped to the client. Super cool. There's a style guide, right? We can see all the content right here. So, you know, this is documenting this application that we can see right here. But what you could also do is just take the code for the documentation and use it for your project because you know how this is done. All right, we can go into the GitHub repository, into these files right here, and then take an exact look at how this person is. He's called Chad CN, by the way. I did a video on his UI framework before. Super cool stuff on how he protects his routes. For example, in the um, middleware right here, we can check the middleware. And we can see there's a with auth that we get from next auth where he protects the pages like this. Super, super good stuff to learn from. The login system, if you're wondering how to handle login with email, you can learn it here. With social providers, you can learn it here. Creating an account, user experience is super good. You see that little back button we had up there, the login screen, it's uh, it's very cool. I'm fl You can picture me flabbergasted. Um, it's not perfect, right? There's things missing, it's not complete right in that sense so a lot of the articles right here are missing we can't click them and if we try to we get redirected back to the home page it is what it is i'm not sure if this is actively maintained anymore i think it was more meant as an experiment on how to implement all this cool functionality with next.js 13 but now that next.js 13 has been out for a while this is not being actively maintained anymore i'm not sure at least the last commit was a month ago and at the rapid pace next.js 13 is moving um you know there's a more of the or there's a little bit of the more recent stuff missing um you know I think Next.js 13.3 just came out and that obviously isn't implemented in here yet, but the main functionality is all there and the clean code is all there. A lot of best practices I have learned from this GitHub repository. We can search the documentation for Tailwind. Okay, and it says not implemented. We're still working on the search, but even though it's not implemented yet, you can see the beautiful Toast notification here. We can swipe it away. So even though it's not implemented, this still makes for a great user experience. We can see guides right here that are similar to the blog articles with the code blocks in here, with images in here and quotes. Super, super well done. It looks beautiful. So even if you're not interested in the underlying code, which I think you would be, right? Um, implementing like a pricing page and the actual subscription, even if you're not interested in that, you can still take away how to properly style an application because this just looks beautiful, dude. I mean, just the styling is really good and I'm very happy I discovered this GitHub repository. 
Um, okay, finally, let me show you how you can run this on your local machine if you're not too familiar with Git. So what we want to do is go to the code right here. And by the way, I forgot to say it, I heavily encourage you to dig into this. Like this is not sponsored at, at all, right? I just found this super cool. And uh, I encourage you to just take a look at the code and learn from it. Why did he do this? Why did he do that? Really get into it and understand the code in this repository. Okay, so to get started in copying this to your local machine, I'm gonna keep this very quick, visit the code button up here and press this copy icon of the code. That's gonna give us an HTTPS. You can also do this with SSH or the GitHub CLI. Uh, I normally just clone the repositories using HTTPS. And then we can go into our command prompt or PowerShell or whatever you use, visit the directory in which we want to copy this file. And then we can say git clone and paste this link right here and hit enter. And okay, I've already cloned this repository to the desktop. So let's just uh, go into a different directory. Let's make a directory called tags-clone, cd into that, into tags-clone, but you just go into the directory you want this project at. And then we say, can say git clone and then the HTTPS link. It's gonna clone the entire repository and the only thing we now need to do is install the dependencies to get this up and running and also configure the environment variables that control this. Um, but there is a .env.example, very, very handy, where you can see all the environment variables that need to be configured. But it's also very easy to just take parts of this project, like just the Stripe integration, that's what I did at least, to learn how it works, and implement that into your own project without worrying about all the email authentication and so on, if that's not what you're interested in. Okay, that's gonna be it for me. I found this uh, super cool. I learned so much from this repository, so I wanted to spread the word again. If you have any similar uh, repositories that it's very easy to learn from that implement a lot of good practices, feel free to share the name below. Again, be careful with sharing the link. YouTube might, might mark that as spam, I'm not sure. Um, but just share the name below and that's gonna be it for me. I wish you a lot of fun learning from this repository and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.